The year 2020 marks the 190th anniversary of St. Andrew's Church. As a part of that commemoration and before the closure began, we had started the practice of including in the weekly bulletins a short glimpse of some interesting or noteworthy person or incident drawn from the history of our congregation. We thought it might be interesting to continue this practice, at least from time to time, during these weekly online services. Now, anyone who has been inside the sanctuary of St. Andrews will know that along the walls of the sanctuary are a number of plaques that have been placed in memory of certain individuals whose lives were marked by some significant degree of commitment or dedication to the life and ministry of the congregation. These plaques are often seen as opportunities for glorification, but in actual fact, they are placed there for inspiration. Sadly, however, even those of us who are regularly in this space do not pay much attention to the names on those old plaques, and in fact, many of us may never have taken the time to learn anything about the examples, inspiring though they might be, that have been left for us by those who've gone before us in the past. Such is the case with this plaque, placed in memory of a man known as the Honorable James McLennan. So who was James McLennan, and what inspiration might we draw from his life and memory even now? James McLennan was born in 1833 in the village of Lancaster in what was then known as Upper Canada. He studied at Queen's University in Kingston, and after completing his studies in law, was called to the bar in 1857, and eventually came to practice law in Toronto with Oliver Mowat. Sir Oliver Mowat played an important role in Canadian history, not only as one of the founders of the Liberal Party of Canada, but as Ontario's longest serving premier and the province's eighth lieutenant governor, serving from 1897 until his death in 1902. And more importantly, Mowat served for a time on the board of managers at St. Andrew's Church. But back to McLennan. After a few attempts at election to public office in the 1870s, James McLennan wrote the Ontario Judicature Act of 1881, which had a profound and transforming effect on the subsequent history of the Ontario judicial system, including the establishment of the, on, the Supreme Court of Ontario, which remained in place until reforms were instituted over 100 years later in 1989. But that was not the end of Mr. McLennan's life of service to the wider community. In 1888, Mr. McLennan was appointed to the Ontario Court of Appeal, where he served for the next 17 years. In 1905, Justice McLennan was then appointed to the Supreme Court of Canada in Ottawa, where he served until his retirement in 1909. After his retirement from the Supreme Court of Canada, his return from Ottawa to Toronto was celebrated and noted in the congregation, since he had become, as one person later wrote, quote, the father of the Kirk Session in wisdom and experience, and almost to be called its tacitly appointed leader. In reading through a number of histories of the congregation, it is intriguing and inspiring how often Justice McLennan is mentioned in relation to the life and ministry of this church, particularly in the final decades of the 1800s and into the early 1900s. At a congregational meeting in June 1915, shortly after Justice McLennan's death, a special resolution was included in the minutes of that congregational meeting, which read, The congregation of St. Andrew's Church, Toronto, heard with deep sorrow of the death of Honorable Mr. Justice McLennan, Judge McLennan had been for nearly 40 years a member of the Kirk Session, having been elected to that office in the year 1876. During this long period, he has always taken an active part in all that concerned the welfare, both spiritual and temporal, of the congregation, and has at all times freely spent himself in promoting its interests. By his courtesy and sympathetic gentleness, he has endeared himself to the congregation, by his wise counsel, he has guided it safely through circumstances of difficulty, and by his faithful and consistent Christian life, and his regular attendance upon the public services of the sanctuary, and by his large and generous use of his financial means, 
he has been a perpetual and stimulating example to his fellow members. His wider outlook and active participation in the affairs of the church at large have also been inspiring and have not only broadened the horizons of the congregation, but have added distinction to the fame of St. Andrews throughout the Dominion. Those words stand as a beautiful tribute to the role and influence of this faithful servant of the congregation, and hopefully, when we see this plaque, an inspiration to all of us, even now. <laughs>